one. I was around seven or eight at the time. I lived with my mother and six cats in a fairly big town. I had experienced other random things around the house, like orbs. We had a spiritualist around before, and he had sent three spirits away, or to the light. I'm not religious in any way, but I do believe in an afterlife and reincarnation. Due to the previous experiences, it wasn't really a surprise to Mother that I had been seeing shadows. Since she had numerous sightings of apparitions appearing in the hallway, this normally happened when I was away with other family, though. It was the start of a new school year in September. I had seen shadows recently, but I took no notice with my typical carefree attitude. I wasn't freaked out by spirits at first. However, two weeks later I was down in the kitchen at around 10pm. A lot of people would argue, what is a seven-year-old doing in the kitchen at 10pm? Well, I was hungry. I was just innocently making a sandwich. The cats would normally be let in at 11pm, and the house cats, Whiskers and Indigo, were both upstairs leaving me completely alone. I was just minding my own business, just getting out some bread ready to butter. Suddenly a cold breeze just seemed to sweep into the kitchen. I was totally alert. I stood frozen. I could feel tears about to stream down my face. But I just continued as if nothing happened. Moments later I heard a box shifting. Luckily for me, I was grasping a knife, so I was somewhat protected. I literally stood there glaring into the chrome kitchen door handle. I looked at the reflection, but I couldn't see anything. I was expecting a person and was gathering myself to go and confront them or scream for my mother. The box kept moving, the sound was so distinctive. I could almost feel it moving across the floor. I was putting together all the possible causes in my head. I fell short due to there being no one downstairs with me, and with that. I screamed for my mother. She rushed downstairs and I burst into tears. I told her, and thankfully she believed due to how distraught I looked. The next day, she called our spiritualist Bob. He was an old guy in his late seventies, but could still walk and operate like someone in their forties. He had provided us with pretty specific information and details that no records or internet searches could provide about the dead past tenants. After a third visit to the house, my mother felt no need to check with people or records associated with the people who supposedly haunted us. I wasn't sure about what he was saying at first either, so I just went along with what he was saying. Although sometimes I feel like me and my mother were giving information for him to more or less feed off of. As he entered the house, the first thing he said was, I can feel her. My mother's face looked confused, but proceeded anyway. He sat down and immediately said, She means no harm. Before long, he went into the back room where it happened, and told us to stay in the front room and stay quiet. Me and my mother tried to listen in, but he didn't make a sound. I obviously didn't understand how he was speaking to anyone without actually speaking, but I now know it's done with the mind. Ten minutes later, he came back in and told us that it was indeed a woman. She used to be the old landlady. He couldn't give us a specific year, but he said around the 1910s. He said she had a daughter as well, and they used to live here. The mother used to sit in the spot where the box was apparently moved and watch the garden in the day. After that, my mother thanked Bob and he made his way out. A couple of weeks later, I started to wake up in the middle of the night to a shadow going into my mother's room. I just sat there, rubbed my eyes and silently waited until my fear subsided and fell asleep. Although a couple of days later, I started to wake up every morning without fail to a brand new five pence piece next to me on my bedside table. I think after four or five days I approached my mum and asked her why she kept giving me five pence, because who else had access to my room at night? It always amazed me how she didn't wake me but that's what I believed at first. Somehow my mother let it keep on going for at least a week and a half. It was bothering me at school, because my mother said she hadn't given or left any money for me, so I kept nagging her, until she finally called Bob again. Once again he entered the room and sat down, asked where it happened, and went up to the room and shut the door. He didn't let us go up again. 
it took him a good 20 minutes until he finally returned downstairs. When he returned, he gave a big sigh and just started off with, She just wants help. I just sat there with a big question in my mind. My mother asked, With what? Bob said it's the same landlady. A horrific event happened to her daughter. She was trampled to death by a horse and carriage just around the corner. The road around the corner was kind of a main road and had been for decades. Because it led you into the main village, so it was no surprise really that there was a lot of traffic. He explained that her daughter got all her teeth knocked out during the accident, and the mother searched for doctors to operate after she came to her mother in spirit, wanting her teeth back. Bob said five pence was worth a different amount back then. There wasn't a five pence piece, but maybe that's all she could make appear. The five pence every day represented a tooth. So basically she paid me five pence for a single tooth every day. According to the information that the woman apparently told him, she said her daughter was called Ben Juan and was 11 at the time, and I reminded her of her daughter. I think me and my mother were truly taken aback, even though it was a lot for me to take in at that age. I understood her need and why she bothered me, and tried to catch my attention. I've never been the same. That was my story. I've had more spirits in my home since. Bob thinks I've got spiritual abilities. He thinks I have now opened a door to the spiritual realm, and I'll have to live with them for my whole life. Thanks for listening. 2. This might be long because it's my life after 18, but since a young age I've been sensitive, both emotionally and spiritually. I'm a guy, so I've been bullied for being in touch with my emotions and crying, but whatever. I don't really believe in coincidences, and I believe most things happen for a reason. I've been able to sense the emotions of people, mostly living, now dead people. In my old house, I think there was some manifestation or entity, but nothing too bad. What first opened me to ghosts and stuff was the Ghost Adventures documentary. I still love ghost adventures and catch every episode when I can. My more profound experiences began about a year ago, after visiting a museum inside a house near mine in Wisconsin. I walked upstairs with my mom and a tour guide. As the tour guide was telling us about the woman who lived there in the 1800s, I smelled beautiful perfume. Neither the tour guide nor my mom was wearing perfume, and it only happened in that one area. That's when things began to escalate. I think she opened me up more to the paranormal by me acknowledging her. I'm not sure, but she didn't seem malevolent. Just curious about me. I drive past that museum every day, and I have vowed never to enter the premises again. A few months later, I moved to an apartment above a bar. There was something evil in that apartment. I believe it was and is a demon by which I was oppressed. I did terrible and inexcusable things I won't mention, but needless to say I didn't kill anyone, but I did pay for my crimes. I know demons prey on weakness and find ways to hurt you and others around you. I have anxiety, and during these times paranoia. It used me for its own agenda, I'm quite religious, and after praying and getting caught, I got away across town. Every time I went by that apartment, I sensed it was evil and avoided it and it. A few weeks after leaving, I was couch surfing and directly above my head, a huge bang shook me and it was so hard I could feel it vibrate the wall. I went upstairs and asked if anyone slammed the doors. No one did. I can't prove it wasn't paranormal, but I can't prove it was. What came next was of my own doing. My mother was summoned to Plainfield, Wisconsin, to help a foreign exchange student. I went along with great anticipation. That place is evil. I don't know how to explain it. Just ripples of energy coming from that city. I went to Ed Gein's grave and felt so sad. I want to cry thinking about it. Every other place is evil, but Ed's grave is a sacred sight to me now. I think that it is bad, but I don't care. My next experience is after, on a whim, 
I went on a paranormal road trip to Savannah, Georgia, to the Moon River Brewing Company, and Dallas, Texas to the Texas School Book Depository. On four separate occasions I saw cars driving by me, pulled off to get gas, and then saw them involved in accidents. After the fourth one I don't think it was coincidence. I think I was meant to die in that road trip, but for some reason I was saved. Maybe Mr. Death will come for me soon, but not yet. The other things that happen to me are shadows and seeing things out of the corner of my eyes, like figures and even cars while I'm driving. The only other thing I'll mention from that road trip was, as I see it currently, extraterrestrial. I was living in Arkansas, I think I saw a black shape over a field, like a raised black fuzzy eyebrow in the city. I thought maybe it was a parachute, but there was nothing beneath. A few seconds later it changed shape to a cigar shape and was letting smoke out. I looked for a second to the road, literally one second, and when I looked back it was totally gone. That's why I don't think it was a parachute, it was gone too quickly, and there were no reports of parachuting accidents in the area the next day. The last two things are experiences I had while working at a funeral home. I was sitting in the office one morning and all of a sudden, a huge crash resounded throughout the building. Another employee and me looked at the screen of security cameras and didn't notice anything. I got up and we noticed a chair tipped over. Not unusual, except there was no way it could have fallen because they were leaning against the wall like a ladder, ruling out gravity. I rested them against the wall again and tested my theory. The only way they could have tipped over is if something pulled them past the balancing point and threw them to the ground. The other experience I had there was in a storage room, previously the embalming room behind the scenes. Two easels were forcibly thrown in front of me, and just like the chairs, I found no reasonable explanation for them to fall the way they did. I was not scared, but I was happy that I was not crazy. 3. Let me start at the beginning, sort of. My entire childhood was spent in a haunted house. We dealt with a white-looking, smudgy figure that was small in stature and would peek out from our hallway that led to the bathroom and bedrooms of our house. You could see it from the living room. It would peek out from around the corner, then disappear to the left or right. I personally dealt with a huge, imposing shadow person that seemed to appear at random times. The first time I saw him, I was a young teen trying to get in touch with my spirit guide via an internet article that I only half read. We've all been there, right? We dealt with things being thrown once a dog toy flew across the room and hit our Bichon in the butt. It had been on the floor and my mother saw it rise up, hang in the air, and whiz at the dog. A metal pan flew off our table. It had to first levitate over the back of a chair. A full can of Diet Coke was tossed and a hand-etched glass my ex fiance made me sailed across the room and shattered. Invisible hands would tug at our shirts as we cooked, and we'd hear whispers in our ears very often. When my son was born, he would look into the corner of the room and giggle. When he got older, he was laying in his bed and talking out loud. When I asked him who he was speaking to, he told me Rogers, which was what I called my great-grandmother. It wasn't her name, it was a nickname that he would not have known. My best friend lived with us for about six months. In that time she was screamed at, had her butt pinched, and when she would go to the bathroom at night and look out into the living room, the shadows would seemingly scatter. This went on no matter what time of day or night. It didn't matter who was there or what we were doing, and the activity was never something specific. Toward the end of the lives of our Bichon and our Pomeranian, something began to shift. My mother would hear me talking in my bedroom, and when she'd open my door, I wouldn't be there. My dad would hear my parents' bedroom door open and shut, followed by my mom's typical warm greeting to the pups of, Good morning, boys, only to find that she was already at work or still very much asleep. We started hearing my son talking, but he'd be with his dad. It mimicked our voices, our footfalls, even our sighs and our laughs. We heard growls from the corner of our living room opposite the hallway, and I would sometimes hear a woman sobbing. This continued for a long time. About a year ago, we finally found a new home to move into. 
It's beautiful and I love it immensely. We knew enough about paranormal activity to know that entities can and will follow people if certain measures aren't taken. So in an effort to not taint the new house with an undesirable presence, we went to a local spiritual shop and spent quite a lot of money and time buying up safeguards to cleanse ourselves and to protect us from attachments. I saged our new house, then us before we'd enter the old, then the old, then us again when we'd leave. We wore black tourmaline bracelets every time we entered the house, and all items when I was present were saged. Occasionally, some things were glossed over if my mother was making a convenience run to the old house for something we needed that hadn't fit in the initial move. Our first night in the new house, I blamed every noise on, eh, it's a new house, stop being paranoid. By our fifth month in the new house, I was still in that same mindset. By the eighth month or so, Mark, I began to see something familiar and unsettling. As I would exit the shower, if the door was open, I'd see what I can only describe as a white translucent smudge, pull back from peeking around the corner of the bathroom door frame. I saged the absolute hell out of our house once more. Everything was fine for about two months. Then it happened again. In addition, we've started hearing footsteps in the kitchen. My dad heard someone say hello to him in the basement. He also heard someone scream at the new puppy when she was barking. I've heard my mom, my dad, and my son all talking with no one here. Last night, my mother heard the sound of my son and me laughing in the upper living room and the sound of running footsteps up there as well. When she came to investigate, she found us both asleep. It happened again, this time louder. She came up again to find us asleep, and the water in the bathroom sink was on hot, full blast. I placed black tourmaline stones in every corner of my son's room and made the sign of the cross in his doorframe. I do it every night. I want to know if anyone knows what it is we are dealing with here. I realize that we need to have a proper investigation to truly know, but from experience, does anyone want to wager a guess? I have a feeling I know, and I really don't want that to be the case. The strange part, as if it wasn't all pretty weird, is that my best friend and I went back to the old house and felt nothing. We found no evidence. It's almost as if they all moved out with us. If anyone can at least spitball an idea, that would be great. Thanks. 4. Hey guys, I'm from India, and this story made me believe that paranormal really does exist, and I wanted to share with you all. I don't know if it was sleep paralysis or not, but whatever it was, it was damn scary. Sorry for making it too long, but it is 100% true, and what followed was even scarier. Me, my younger brother, my dad, and my mom took a trip to one of the most holy places in my country, as my maternal grandparents lived there with my aunt and her two daughters. It was a routine in every summer holidays to take a trip down to that place. So this particular time, when I was 21, we reached there in the afternoon. My aunt, along with her two daughters, who were also younger than me, took us to a nearby Indian temple for blessings. When we reached there, my sister told me that it was the temple where most of the local exorcisms took place. So if someone calls your name in the temple, then no need to look back. When I asked my aunt about it, she denied and ignored my query. My cousin again explained to me that this temple has a long history of exorcisms and the spirits are all trapped inside the temple and roaming free. Truly speaking, I did feel uncomfortable and felt a lot of negative aura the moment I stepped inside the temple. So after the visit, we all went back to Gran's house and called it a night. Now I clearly remember the events that followed that particular temple visit. I slept with my mother on the old solid wooden bed that old people in that particular area commonly have. I slept good without any bad dreams, but it was peculiar that in the morning, 8am, I had that sleep paralysis kind of thing. I said kinda because it does not fulfill the definition of sleep paralysis. I woke up at around 8 and couldn't open my eyes. I knew what was going on around like my granny and mom in the kitchen making tea for everyone and talking with each other. But my eyes and body couldn't move. 
and I could see a completely different world where I was in a glass house. Like modern contemporary glass house with no windows and doors. And I'm running around the house like a madwoman. It's all dark outside the house, and only a few dim white lights are on inside. And then I see a woman in a black robe, with open hair floating a few feet above the ground. Then suddenly she looks at me and is holding my mother in her arms and said in Hindi, I have already taken you, and now it's your mother's turn. And laughs in a shrill voice while cutting my mom's neck with something sharp while my mom is unconscious. All this while, I was hearing my mother's voice in the kitchen though, like I knew what's going on in the present as well as my vision. After the vision disappears, I wake up with my body straight and shutting up. My mom came running from the kitchen as I was sweating. I told her everything and asked her to leave the place as soon as possible. In 21 years of my life, I never experienced anything like this in my granny's house, but this time I did. So we packed our bags and left in the afternoon and reached my place in the evening. That night I was chatting with my best friend on the phone and we were all sleeping in the same room. I had blankets on me and was sleeping on a mattress on the floor by the side of the bed where my parents and brother were sleeping. I swear to God that I wasn't sleepy even a bit, and I was lying in bed upside down and chatting with my bestie when a hand just held me by my leg. I froze in terror. After a few seconds, I shook my leg and just sat upright while shaking off my blanket and mattress to see if it was some rat or something. It surely wasn't. I got back to chatting with my bestie and texted her. If I die tonight, you should know that something just held me by my leg. She was like, don't scare me. Even I am sleeping alone in my room. And then again the hand came back to my leg and pulled me off my mattress and I started screaming till I hit the dressing table of the room and stood up and turned the lights on. I started crying and my mom woke up and I told her what happened. She then made me sleep on the bed with her. That was really scary and the events that followed were really unexplainable. And we as a family experienced everything from poltergeist to possession. If you guys want to know more, let me know. And I will post what happened after that. 5. My name is Zane. I really just wanted to tell you this story as it has haunted me for a while. When I was around 5 to 9 years old, we lived in a small house outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in Koppel, Pennsylvania. I can only assume that stuff like this happened before I started to notice, as I lived in this house from birth until I was nine years old, but I only started to notice when I was about five. My little brother was one at the time. It was the summer of 2003, my little brother's name is Miles. The house that we lived in was two bedrooms, so naturally my parents lived in one and my brother and I shared the other. My dad worked in a steel mill and my mom worked as a third grade teacher at a local elementary school. Anyways, the first instance that I remember vividly is I was in the shower and I was already a little on edge as I had just started to shower alone without my parents' help. But I kept hearing someone knock on the door and I would say, Someone's in here. Like obviously you can hear the shower. Anyway, that happened probably like three or four times so eventually I got out of the shower soaking wet and naked and went to the bathroom door to see what was up. There was no one there. The only people at home at the time were my babysitter slash nanny Sarah and my brother Miles. I remember walking out of the bathroom soaking wet with no clothes on yelling, Sarah, and I finally found her in my room putting my brother down for a nap. I asked her if she had knocked on the door and she said no. Anyway, so naturally... I was a little creeped out, but not too scared as my little brain couldn't fully process what was going on. After that, the days went on as normal for a while, aside from little things that would happen that were easy to brush off as coincidences, until around Christmas that year. It was actually the day before Christmas Eve. I remember this so well because it still scares me to this day. I was sound asleep, I'm guessing. Anyways, I woke up. And at first it just seemed like a routine wake up in the middle of the night. Like a lot of six year olds I woke up in the middle of the night, I would go to my parents room and sleep with them. I tried to be really quiet as not to wake my brother in his crib. I always slept with my door open because I liked to let a little light from the hallway come in. I didn't realize this until after that, when I woke up the door was closed. 
which I didn't think was weird at all at the time, until I walked up to the door and it was locked. I knew for a fact that I didn't lock it, and it could only be locked from the inside, and my one-year-old brother could barely walk at this point, much less reach the doorknob. So anyways, I brushed it off, and unlocked the door and walked to my parents' room. The next part is what gave me chills to this day. I was probably asleep in my parents' room for two or so hours, before the baby monitor started to go off. I rolled over and went back to sleep, as my dad got up and went to go check on Miles. Anyways, I hear him come back into the room and he taps me on the shoulder to alert me, and says, Did you lock the lock on your room door? I'm honestly shaking typing this because it scares me so much, but I said no dad, it was locked when I woke up, and came in here and I unlocked it and left it open when I came to sleep with you all. So at this point we were all just a little confused, and my dad is worried because my brother was essentially locked in our room crying. It wasn't too bad because the doors were pretty easy to break into with a credit card. So my dad broke in and got Miles out. That was the end of the weirdness for that night, but neither my dad nor me forgot that, as we still talk about it sometimes to this day. If I'm being honest, after that the activity stopped for two years until I was eight, almost nine years old. When I was eight is when it started to get really bad. By this time we had made renovations to the house, and my brother and me had our own rooms. My room was right next to his on one hallway, and then my parents' room was on the other side of the house, in an adjacent hallway. My birthday is on July 31st, and this event occurred probably around July 25th. My mom and dad were at dinner that night, so me and Miles had a babysitter. It was a different babysitter than the usual, as our babysitter was on vacation, but she had babysat our neighbours, so I vaguely knew who she was. I was playing my PlayStation in the living room, and the babysitter, I don't even remember her name, but we can call her Erin, was playing with Miles in our nursery and playroom. I remember I was playing an MVP baseball game that I was obsessed with. Anyways, the TV started going in and out. It would go from the game to a solid blue screen, back to the game, and back and forth probably like six or seven times. So I called Erin in, and she said to just ignore it, and I was like, okay. Anyways, I kept playing for probably another ten minutes, and then it went to a blue screen again, made a bzzz noise, and then went black. I screamed because it honestly sounded like the TV was about to explode. I went to turn the TV back on, and it was fine. I played my game for probably another five minutes, and then it happened again. This probably happened four times before I gave up on playing the game. This was a spark for activity in the house. From this point until the day we moved out two weeks later, the activity did not stop. Most of it was just the typical door shutting and faint whisper that could be explained away. But the one night that made us leave and never come back was much more than that. I think it's worth mentioning that I think we all knew something was going on, but we never really mentioned it, because I think we were all just trying to pretend it wasn't happening. But after this, it was impossible to ignore. We were all sitting on our couch, watching a movie, and eating ice cream in the living room, as we tended to do a lot of Saturday nights. This is when the lights in the kitchen started to flicker, so my dad went to check it out. He turned the light off, as we didn't really need it, and sat back down. Again, the lights started flickering, and we looked at each other, knowing exactly what was going on. But again, he got up and tried to fix it. He sat back down, and we watched the movie for probably another five minutes, before the lights started to flicker, this time much more aggressive than before. My dad went in there again, in an attempt to screw the light bulb out. But just as he was reaching for the light bulb, it shattered, and all of the glass fell onto his face and onto the ground. I wish I could say that was the end of it. My little brother, who I think may have been a sort of target for this thing, whatever it was, began to scream really loud. Louder than I had ever heard a human scream before. The only thing I can pair it to is the sound of a dog when you accidentally step on his toe, but at a higher pitch and for like 30 seconds straight. All I knew for sure was that it was not a human scream. My parents at this point, I think, had had enough, and we went and stayed at our grandma's house that night. I now realize that this doesn't sound as scary as it actually was. I never went back in that house again, and I never have a desire to. 
as it is where a lot of my fear resides. Hey everybody, Hell Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Paranormal Stories, episode 79. Thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Alright folks, quick outro on this one. Uh, just for those of you who are enjoying the Jack and the Space Empire of Continuum story, I'm going to have part 5 up hopefully on Sunday. Monday at the absolute latest, but hopefully Sunday. Uh, I had a splurge of energy today and it's decided, let's try and get one of those knocked out. It's been a bit too long since I did one. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.